on grad programs. So just general info or like basic info, obviously we cover a little bit of that. In our intro slide. You can do that, yeah. And then we have the scholarship slide right before the end. So we'll make sure to talk about that as well. Okay, I think we're, we're ready. So welcome to our session today about art schools in the United States. I'm Paula Massad, one of the Education USA advisors at the US Embassy in Doha. And I have with me my colleague, Asil. Hello, everyone. I'm Asil Ogeli. Thank you for joining us. And thanks for our panelists today joining us. And please, for those who are joining us on Zoom and those who are following, uh, watching us on Facebook, please share your questions, your inquiries, and we would address them. Thank you so much. And it's my pleasure to introduce our panelists. We have Mike Rossi from the California College of the Arts, Sasha Walker, College for Creative Studies in Michigan, Sarah Titford, Maryland Institute College of Art, and Anita, oh, Anita, I'm gonna have to ask you to help me pronounce your, your name. Bardwaj, Bardwaj. Thank you. From the School of Art Institute of Chicago. Welcome. And I'll let Mike take over. Yeah, thank you all. Um... It's a pleasure being here. Thank you for having us and um, giving us the opportunity to speak with you all today. I am going to share my screen and we will get started. So um, we are representing uh, four different art and design schools located here in the US. And today we're going to be talking to you about understanding, uh, understanding art schools here in, um, in the United States. Um, so as per our uh, brief introduction, this again is our names. Um, so we don't necessarily have to go through that again, but um, essentially we are all representatives of schools that are part of an organization called ACAD or the Association of Independent Colleges of Art and Design. And that's why we've sort of banded um, together. So ACAD is a nonprofit consortium of 36 of the leading art and design schools in the US and Canada. Um, together, we are educating over 50,000 students, both grad and undergrad, every year, um, and many thousands more through things like summer programs and continuing education programs. And really what we're trying to do both individually and collectively is um, really make sure that people understand that these ACAD schools, these art and design schools um, are of value and sort of promote that value of studying art and design. Um, one benefit of ACAD, um, one of the free perks that we are able to offer is a portfolio review through the SlideRoom platform. And SlideRoom is the platform actually that a majority of us use for portfolio submissions during the application process. But through this link you see here, acad.slideroom.com, um, students in high school, as well as students who might be in college and thinking of transferring, can have the opportunity to upload um, up to five pieces of artwork and select up to 10 of the ACAD schools to receive a portfolio review um, from. So essentially you create an account, upload some work, um, check off which schools you're interested in, and then we'll take a look at your pieces and send you some feedback. And as you can imagine, portfolio reviews can really be an invaluable tool um, when preparing to go through that application process. So again, this is specifically for undergraduate students. Um, it's really great if you're a little bit younger, you know, ninth grade, 10th grade, you can do one of these every year and continue to build and grow your portfolio. Um, but again, it is a free service. Most of us will also offer opportunities for individual, in this case, Zoom portfolio reviews one-on-one. -on -one. You just contact the institution that you're interested in connecting with and our contact information will be on the screen at the end of the presentation. So the first thing we're gonna do is just briefly introduce our school. So you have a little bit of a better idea of who we are and where we're coming from. So again, my name is Mike. I am the Assistant Director of International Enrollment here at California College of the Arts or CCA. So uh, we are a fully accredited private nonprofit school of art and design located in the Bay Area. We've been around for over a hundred years. We were founded during the arts and crafts movement. So we have a lot of strong fine art and craft based programs, furniture, textiles, glass, photography, jewelry, metal arts, sculpture, ceramics, printmaking, and others. Um, but because of our location, 
um, sort of in the innovation corridor, all this awesome stuff that's happened with design and technology, even architecture, we've been able to really fold that into our offerings as well. So we have a lot of great programs in things like architecture, interior design, illustration, animation, graphic design, industrial design, interaction design design and more. Altogether, there are over 20 undergraduate programs and almost a dozen graduate programs, all falling into those areas of art, design, architecture, and writing. One thing that sets us apart from some of the other art and design schools um, is our STEM designated programs. So STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics. And there's a big push, especially here in the States, for students to pursue programs that fall into those categories. The benefit of an international student taking a STEM program is the opportunity to apply for a two-year extension of your OPT. So in general, an international student can stay in the country for one year upon completing a program. But again, if you are completing a STEM designated program, you have the opportunity to apply for an extension and stay for three years. On the undergraduate side, animation, interaction design, and our five-year Bachelor of Architecture program carry that STEM designation. On the graduate side, interaction design and our two architecture programs, the Master of Architecture and the Master of Advanced Architectural Design carry those STEM, designated, uh, STEM designations as well. We're a pretty small institution. So under 2000 students altogether, about 1450 undergrad, about 400 grad, uh, but we are very diverse. So 42% of our student body is coming from about 50 countries around the world. And this has helped us be ranked one of the top 10 most diverse campuses in the US. Our location affords us a lot of amazing opportunities. Over 200 camp, uh, companies a year are physically coming to our campus to connect with our students. And our students are participating in over 600 internships a year. So a lot of really uh, good chances to connect with professional companies. Uh, this also helps where our faculty is concerned. So almost all of our instructors are current practicing professionals working in industries and for companies our students want to be a part of. So for example, you might have an animation teacher who works at Pixar or a graphic design teacher who works at Google. And because we have small class sizes, you have a really great opportunity to work elbow to elbow next to these individuals um, you know, and uh, learn from them very closely. We've been ranked the number one art school in the nation for return on investment and being located in one of the best cities for creative talent in the world is certainly another benefit of studying at a place like CCA. And now I will turn it over to Sasha. Thank you, Mike. So as mentioned, my name is Sasha Walker. I am the Assistant Director of International Admissions at the College for Creative Studies, which is located in Detroit, Michigan. Um, so CCS, much like my colleagues, is a four-year nonprofit college of art and design. So we only offer visual arts programs and we have both bachelor's and master's degrees. We have about 1400 students with a 10 to one student to faculty ratio. So we are a bit of a smaller campus. And like I mentioned about being in Detroit, we're extremely proud of being located here. Uh, we are about a four hour drive, both from Chicago or Toronto. And Detroit has a rich legacy of design and innovation. And as an industrial powerhouse that fueled the rise of the automobile, the city has also been a hub for creatives and entrepreneurs. So CCS was founded as the Society of Arts and Crafts with a large foundation in craft-based programs. So that's why you'll see so many offerings in our undergraduate crafts department. Um, but we have uh, spurred into a design, more, no, more known as the design school these days. Um, we do have product design and transportation design. But um, just to touch back on Detroit before I go into those, uh, Detroit was named, it's currently the first and only UNESCO city of design in the US. And cities with this designation are all committed to using design as a tool for economic development. So this is something that ties back into our undergraduate programs. Um, it was brought on by De Detroit Core or Core Detroit, which is a creative incubator based in our, one of our buildings. And it is uh, overseen by CCS along with the Kresge Arts Foundation in Detroit. Um, but going back to our majors, we do have direct entry programs, which means you will apply to the program of your choice with um, those major specific courses starting in the very first semester. And this is a little bit different from a, a few schools that may have a full foundation year, like all of my colleagues here have all found a full foundation year before you declare your major in your second year. 
And in the center of the slide, you'll see a list of our undergraduate programs. Uh, some of the more popular ones are going to be animation, game design, or illustration. But we also have unique programs such as concept design, where students will create designs used in films or animations. So if you think about a, a futuristic film like Guardians of the Galaxy, they're creating the spaceships, the weapons, and the characters. And then we also have a program called Fashion Accessories Design, which is about designing and physically making shoes, hats, and handbags. This program is transitioning into a full fashion program starting in fall 2022. And of course, we are internationally known for our transportation design program. Uh, three major automotive brands are located in Detroit, which allows us to have the direct connection with that industry. And industry professionals are teaching those courses. And we also have representatives from Ford, Chrysler, and GM on our um, curriculum board. So they directly influence what kind of courses are being taught in the transportation design or product design courses. And so master's wise, uh, we do currently have, um, we have four MFA programs with, I, I think we're doubling it starting this next fall. I think we have eight, uh, so four additional ones coming in. And much like Mike mentioned about the, uh, about STEM programs, STEM designated programs, seven of our undergraduate programs hold this designation for OPT extension. We also have four of our MFA programs with that designation. And for undergrad, those are communication design, product design, transportation design, and then all sections within the entertainment arts um, department. And then of course, CCS also has a career development office that provides a number of opportunities to connect with industry professionals through things like internships, industry days, portfolio reviews, and corporate sponsored projects. A corporate sponsored project uses real, class, or sorry, classroom skills in a real world situation to prepare for direct entry into industry. So these projects are sponsored by a company such as Nike or Ford, who will then work with the students for the entire semester. And I often say that it's essentially a 15 week job interview that leads directly into an internship, a scholarship, or even full time employment. And offerings like this um, are what lead to a 96% employment rate within a year of graduation for CCS grads. And of course, there's additional information about our MFA programs that I'd be happy to answer if anyone has questions. So now I'll go ahead and pass it over to Sarah. Thank you, Sasha. And hello, everyone. Um, I'm very happy to be with you today. Um, I am representing the Maryland Institute College of Art, which is located in Baltimore, Maryland. And Baltimore is on the east coast of the United States. We're about uh, three and a half hours south of New York City. And Washington, D.C. is just a 45 minute train ride away from us. Um, MICA is actually the oldest continuously degree granting art and design college in the United States. So we were founded in 1826 and we have a very long and rich history in uh, both the fine arts and design. Uh, we are consistently ranked in the top 10, um, according to the US News and World Report, um, specifically in the areas of graphic design and our fine arts departments, sculpture, painting, and drawing. Uh, but most recently, we have um, very popular majors in animation, illustration, product design, architecture, uh, a total of 20 undergraduate programs. Um, we also have 16 graduate programs as well. Um, so our student population is about 3,500 and one third of those students are international coming from over 52 different countries. Um, we are also very focused in career development at MICA. Um, you can see the statistic at the bottom here. Um, on average, 95% of our graduates are employed um, full-time, part-time or entrepreneurs after graduation. And um, we are unique in that um, we have a very integrative approach to our curriculum. Um, many students are combining things like um, art and design with science and technology, even healthcare. Uh, we have a wonderful relationship and partnership with Johns Hopkins University, which is also located in Baltimore. And so many students are um, working with, uh, with graduate students and um, combining projects with Johns Hopkins. Um, we also are very customizable. Um, so at MICA, there is a first year program. It's a little bit different than foundation um, in that it is not uh, sort of the base level 
um, classes that you would take in a foundation year, but a time to really explore. And then you select your major at the end of your first year, but you're able to really customize your curriculum with a whole variety of minors and, um, and you know, take a lot of studio electives to really create your own pathway. So MICA, as you can see, our campus is, is very beautiful. It is situated in a beautiful neighborhood in, um, in Baltimore City. There's over 30 buildings all together. And um, all of our faculty are working professional artists and designers. So much like my colleagues, um, they are really your first access point um, to many of the internships um, and job opportunities after graduation. Uh, and with that, I will hand it off to Anita. Thank you, Sarah. So my name is Anita Bardwaj, and I'm Assistant Director of International Admissions at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago, also known as SAIC. We are located right in the center of Chicago's downtown loop area, right by the lake. Um, so we were founded in 1866, and SAIC is one of the most historically significant accredited independent schools of art and design in the US. We are currently ranked in the top five of art and design schools in the US for our undergrad programs and second in our graduate fine arts program. And we recently were awarded number seven globally. So we're really excited about that. Um, we also have programs that are ranked. So in the ranked in the top five, uh, fiber arts, painting and drawing, photography, uh, printmaking, sculpture, and time-based media, which is film and uh, new media. One of our most incredible resources, that photo with the lion in front of it, is the Art Institute of Chicago, which we call the museum. It's the third largest collection of art in the entire world behind the Met and the Louvre, and is consistently ranked as one of, uh, one of the finest museums globally. And what's unique about this is that it's part of your classroom, it's part of your studio. So students and instructors and professors use the museum as a teaching, as a teaching tool. So oftentimes you will find yourself in class and then in the museum and then back in class and then the museum, same with studio. Um, so it's an opportunity for you to uh, get up close and personal with other works of art um, to further develop your practice. The other thing that's unique about SAIC is that we're truly inter interdisciplinary. So what that means is that we have no majors. We do have pathways, which I'll talk about in a second, but we really um, stress the stress the opportunity for students to work across 18 different departments to um, integrate media, medium materials um, to further develop their your critical thinking skills. Our pathways are in our design area, which include architecture, interior architecture, fashion, vis, visual communication design or graphic design, and designed objects, also known as industrial design. We also layer in a very rigorous liberal arts curriculum. Um, so you'll be taking classes in the sciences, social sciences, humanities, English, because um, we truly believe that meaning equals making. And this rich liberal arts layover um, really is the intellectual backbone for your art and design uh, practices. So we also are a critique based uh, assessment, what that means is that we have no grades, so no majors and no grades. So critiques are really at the heart of the learning process. You know, we really believe that in the critique is where you're, you push the boundaries of your practice, where you learn and grow, um, you are introduced to communicating your critical, uh, critical thinking skills and connecting with your peers and instructors. Um, we also have a fully immersive studio uh, courses. So you're in studio for six hours. So it's a deep dive in and out of the museum in studio for that six hours that fully lets you really dig in and excavate uh, your practices. We also have partnerships with uh, outside companies and uh, mainly around, it's moving towards technology right now, but the likes of Crate and Barrel, Bosch, Samsung, Motorola, there's a, an incubator located in a building called 1871 in downtown Chicago where students uh, enjoy internships and uh, employment opportunities and work on um, new technologies and emerging technologies. So I think that's it for SAIC. Thank you, Anita. 
Um, so again, um, some of the topics that we are going to cover um, are just super basic. So what's art school? What are the differences? Um, can you really get a degree in art? Um, the types of things you'll study. We already touched upon some of these things, but we're gonna take a closer look next. So one of the first things to really consider um, when you are thinking about an art and design school, really any school, but an art and design school is the accreditation. This is a little bit of the drier side of the college admissions process, but this is incredibly important. Um, so accreditation essentially means that the education that you are receiving at the institution you are attending, um, that it counts, that it carries weight. And this is beneficial if you decide to transfer from one institution to another, or if after completing an undergraduate degree, you decide you want to go, uh, go on and, and study a graduate program. Um, an accredited undergraduate degree will allow that graduate degree program to accept the qualifications of your education. Um, so schools in the US are generally accredited by one of seven um, regional accrediting boards, and you can see those listed there. Um, so for example, um, WASC stands for the West, uh, Western Association of Schools and Colleges, and that's the accreditation that um, CCA has being here on the West Coast of the country. But each institution in the US should carry a regional um, accreditation. Then there are specific accrediting bodies for art schools. And this falls a little bit more on a national accrediting level. So generally schools might have a regional accreditation and a national accreditation. For us here today um, and the fellow ACAD schools, generally we are accredited by the National Association of Schools of Art and Design or NASAD. So we would have our regional accreditation and then our national accreditation through NASAD. Some individual programs might also carry separate accreditations. So for example, um, architecture programs like CCA's five-year Bachelor of Architecture have what is called a NAB accreditation, which is the National Architectural Accrediting Board. Some interior design programs would also carry a CETA accreditation, which is the Council for Interior Design Accreditation. So really it's just a way to, um, you know, to, to double check to make sure that the programs are held to a specific type of standard. If a school does not generally share that information immediately with you, it is certainly a question that you should ask, um, you know, before even applying or before deciding to deposit and attend a school is to make sure you understand what accreditations they hold. And then you have options as far as where you can study art. And those are listed here on the screen. So you have traditional art schools, um, like our schools here today, uh, where essentially, um, you know, sometimes we even have art and design located in our title or whatnot, but essentially a school where the main focus of your studies will be in your art practice. You'll still have to take humanities and science courses, um, to fulfill degree requirements, but the main focus of your study will be on that creative practice. There are also art schools that focus on just maybe one or two different forms. Um, sometimes these are like post-graduation portfolio schools or boot camp kind of schools, um, not necessarily um, conferring degrees on students. Maybe sometimes they're more of certificate programs. Um, there are also art colleges within larger universities. So um, the example I tend to use is like um, Syracuse University is a large university in New York. It has an art college within the larger university. Um, and then you can also sometimes get an art degree at a larger college or university. So attending um, the University of San Francisco and getting a degree in fine arts. Usually those are a little bit more general art based degrees. Usually the first couple of years, you're focusing a little bit more on general education courses before you're jumping into the studio. Um, but again, is another option for you to study art. And then art schools have sometimes different types of approaches. Um, so again, in a traditional art school like those here today, um, we're pretty art focused schools, the ones you might generally think about when you're thinking about art school. So you're in the studio from day one, um, and whether or not you have a foundation program or you're jumping right into your major, you're really, you're doing art from the very beginning. 
Um, those art departments within larger colleges or universities um, are, as I mentioned, really not necessarily the main focus of the university or the college. Um, they're conferring other liberal arts degrees, they're offering general education, um, you have more options to take coursework or electives outside of creative areas at these types of schools because they offer a, bright, a wider, more uh, varied range of programs. And then those um, vocational schools, tech schools, um, their focus is a little bit more just on the skill. Um, they're generally not accredited and they can be pretty expensive. Um, the trick with some of these or the pitfall with some of these is that because they're not accredited, um, the coursework is generally non-transferable, which really limits or takes away your grad school options. And the quality in the education you're receiving can vary greatly. So again, it's really important to make sure that you're doing some research, that you're asking questions and you understand the type of education you would be receiving at whichever schools you are considering. All right, so now I'm going to talk to you about the difference between a couple of undergraduate art degrees. Um, most of our presentation today is geared towards undergrad, so you won't hear us talk too in depth about master's level programs, but please do reach out if you have questions regarding those programs that are schools. So uh, typically an art degree would be a bachelor's of fine arts or a bachelor's of arts. So a lot of people are asking what is the true difference between these two programs? The biggest one is that a Bachelor's of Fine Arts is going to be more of a studio art based program, whereas a Bachelor's of Arts is going to be more theory and liberal arts based. So the biggest way to think about it is how um, the coursework is actually broken down. In a BFA program, it will be two thirds of the coursework that are going to be physical art or design making courses, where one third of the coursework is academic based in liberal arts like history, sociology, psychology. And if you think about a BA degree, it is flipped. So it will be two thirds of the coursework academic and then one third of the coursework as being art in design based. So there are also um, specific majors that you can um, study in, and these vary greatly across all of the uh, different universities and colleges that are granting degrees. So definitely look into each individual school you may be considering to see if they have your major. Um, this is, these are just some of the more popular ones or more prominent ones you'll see around at uh, a lot of different schools. But also keep in mind that sometimes the programs have different names. Um, a great example is that at CCS, our fine arts program is uh, now called art practice. So it is a general overseeing and overarching view of what fine arts is. So they may have different names, but it still indicates a program that would be shared across multiple different schools. And you would choose one of these majors for your four year program. Uh, like we talked about earlier with curriculum, there are schools that have a whole foundation year where you don't declare your major until your second year, but you can definitely like have an idea of where you want to be. And so there are a few different curriculums. I guess I already started to kind of go into this one last time. <laughs> but uh, so the, the three major types of curriculum are, uh, the first one is focused in technical programs, which is where you apply directly into your major and start in your first year. That is exactly what CCS is. Um, so you apply for transportation design and then you have those transportation courses in your very first term. And then the other type of um, curriculum would be concept-based program which is where you do not have a major and everything is flexible and students interest helps to shape the course of their studies. So this would be like SAIC where they don't have you declare a major, but you can take courses all based around your areas of interest and, and essentially create your curriculum. And then finally, we have the mashing of the two, the concept and technical based curriculum, which is more like MICA and CCA because they help you think critically and are um, they have that foundation year in, in the first year, and then you declare your major in your second year. So it really just depends on what type of um, education you're looking for, if you really want it to be focused in one particular area, or if you are looking for more of a flexible, create your own, or just kind of a guided area where you have that foundation year to get the same skill sets. And then, of course, we have the application process. Um, and I'm going to preface this by saying, 
check every school that you are looking into because we, all of our application processes are slightly different, but they're generally the same. So please, uh, if you are looking at multiple schools, start a spreadsheet and you can write down their dates, uh, their um, deadlines, as well as what they require for their applications, just so that you have it all straight, because it may have one small difference between each of the applications. And so there are a number of schools that use Common App, um, which is one platform where you essentially fill out one application and then you select every school that you would like to send it to. Not all institutions use this application, um, but in, in addition to that, there are some schools who have direct applications. Um, I know that uh, two, Anita, do you do Common App? I always forget. Yeah, so everyone, uh, Mike, you do as well? Yeah, so I'm the only school that does not use Common App in the Art Pod, um, whereas we have a direct application. I know that CCA also has a direct application, so you can choose either option if they have both, but the Common App just encompasses more school with schools with that one application. And then um, all art schools that you um, are looking into may consider a portfolio as part of their application. I often say that um, if a school is looking at your portfolio coming in, they often want to make sure your portfolio is strong going out. So definitely consider that when you are applying to art schools because the portfolio will make sure that we understand your base level of skills and how well you can succeed in the art world and how how we can train you up to be extremely successful. And um, portfolio will be the most important part of the application process, um, which Sarah will talk about in just a moment. Uh, but there are some other items that you may need to submit with the application process. These could be things like letters of recommendation, which should be from someone who knows you in, a, in an academic or artistic uh, sense. So it could be like an art teacher, it could be a coach, it could be a, a liberal arts teacher or a guidance counselor, but it typically would not need to be someone like a family member or a friend. It just needs someone that would be in like a professional sense of knowing you academically. Then uh, some schools do also want to see an essay or an artist statement. Um, every school might have a little bit of a different guideline on this. So definitely check their recommendations. Um, some want more of a, um, an artist statement that talks about your practice and your ideas and others may be a personal essay that speaks about you individually. So they're slightly different, um, but every school will have guidelines on what they're looking for. I know that some art school applications have writing prompts that you need to do that are specific to that institution or they may have uh, portfolio prompts that are specific to that school. So you'll want to make sure to check this before applying, just in case you do need to create artwork specific for them or create a writing piece specific for them. And then of course, finally, um, most schools in the US will want to make sure that you do have English proficiency. This can be shown through a number of different ways, uh, things such or exams such as TOEFL, IELTS or Duolingo, and the scores vary greatly across all of our schools. So again, make sure to check each school individually to make sure that those scores meet the requirement. And now Sarah will talk to you about portfolios. All right, thank you. Um, so forgive me if I am repeating some um, key things that Sasha mentioned, but uh, it is extremely important when you are looking um, at art and design programs in the United States that you look at each individual school um, for their requirements. Um, you know, as Sasha also mentioned, you know, the top schools, the schools that have the highest accreditation, um, for the most part will require a portfolio. Uh, some of the university programs also will require portfolios for their programs. Um, so also, I would like to just take a moment to differentiate between undergraduate and graduate portfolios because they are very, very different. Um, if you are uh, looking at graduate programs and you are interested in learning more about um, portfolios for graduate programs, um, the best thing that you can do is reach out directly to the schools that you're interested in. Um, many times there are um, ways that you can set up a portfolio review individually, but for graduate portfolios, they are very specific. Um, and I'm mainly going to be talking about undergraduate portfolios. So um, the, same, the same goes for undergrad. 
Uh, the best way to know if you are headed in the right direction is to get a portfolio review. And there are multiple ways of doing that. Um, a portfolio review uh, sounds very intimidating, but it really is not. Um, all of us uh, do portfolio reviews um, all throughout the year. And it is basically a time to get feedback on your work, to get new ideas, to learn how to document your work properly. Um, and it is not a time for us to you know, make a judgment about admission. So um, getting a portfolio review can be simply uh, collecting your work that you have made so far, even if it is just very um, fundamental or foundational. Um, you can show us sketchbooks, you can show us works that are in progress or unfinished pieces. So please don't feel intimidated by that portfolio review. Um, and my, my last plug for the portfolio review is that for most of our institutions, we keep track of students who get portfolio reviews and it helps not only with getting admission to our schools, but also for scholarship. Um, we oftentimes we'll see, oh, the student has reviewed with us multiple times, they must be very interested, um, and scholarship can be uh, a result of that. So you can see on the screen here, there are um, two, um, two resources that you can use. Slide Room, um, which is a platform um, that we use for our applications, but also um, the ACAD site that uh, Mike mentioned in the very beginning. Um, this link here you can use to sign up for a portfolio review with any of the ACAD institutions. Um, so you just simply upload your work, it's about five images, and then you can select from a whole list of schools um, to get feedback and they will email you. Um, there's also a great resource in the US called the National Portfolio Day, and um, the website is listed there as well. And that is where collectively our organizations get together and, and um, you can now virtually bring your portfolio or have your digital portfolio. And um, in one day, you can actually select the schools that you would like to get feedback from um, in a live setting and we can go over those as well. And then individually, we love to speak with students um, on a one-on-one -on -one basis. So um, you can always go to the admissions website uh, of the schools that you're interested in and set up a time to get a review or just to simply ask questions. Can I just interject briefly? Um, National Portfolio Day now has international schools involved. So there is a school in London, there's a couple Italian schools. So it's not just US based schools that are part of National Portfolio Day, there is an international presence. So you can choose any of those institutions to have a review. Thanks, Sasha. Okay, so um, when putting together a portfolio um, on the undergraduate level, we're going to focus on that. Um, we know that you are not, you are not going to be uh, an absolute expert in the field that you want to necessarily study. So in, on the high school level, um, you are taking many classes to really build your skills, um, learn about uh, concepts, um, develop uh, interests in different types of materials. So we are really looking for that combination of your skill set and your ideas and your creativity. It's that balance that we're looking for. So typically schools will want to see between 10 and 20 uh, finished works. Um, in the US, we really do focus on um, finished works as opposed to all process. Um, some schools do love to see uh, process and that would be sort of one thing to, um, to really investigate depending on the school that you're interested in. Um, but we love to see skills like color theory, composition, um, really a, a knowledge of the material that you're using. Um, you can absolutely use a variety of subject, subject matter and media, um, or you can really focus on one. Um, there's no right way to make a portfolio, um, one right way. Uh, as, as creative as people are, as, as you know, varied as portfolios really can be. So um, the other piece of this is really learning to write and speak about your work. Uh, there's a, a section where you can write a description um, so we can learn a little bit more. Um, and, and many schools are interested in, in seeing what's called observational drawings. Um, here it says, uh, for example, still life or figure drawings, which is something um, you may be familiar with already. Um, I would say that 
while doing observational drawings to make them really interesting and to really capture the attention of the school that you're applying to, make sure that the objects that you are drawing or the environments that you are drawing are really interesting to you. They're personal spaces, personal objects, um, that is going to engage you more and, and then in turn uh, engage the viewer. All uh, types of media are welcome. So 2D, 3D, moving images um, are all um, perfectly acceptable. In the platforms that, um, that are used by schools, you can upload um, GIFs, you can upload videos. Sometimes if you have like a three-dimensional piece or um, you know, there's a, a time-based piece, a video can really be a great way to document that. Um, and uh, really pay attention again to the specification of the school. So I think um, Sasha may have mentioned this um, earlier, but CCS, for example, is a direct entry school where they really want to be looking for um, things that are, are geared towards the major that you're interested in. Um, whereas schools that have first year programs or foundation programs, um, really don't need to see uh, that you know how to build buildings if you're interested in architecture or that you know how to create an entire animation if you're interested in animation, but rather we, we just want to see your skills and your concepts at that point. Um, so that's a really good thing to pay attention to. Next slide. And then um, for film uh, portfolios, for anyone interested in film, um, it is really important to just pay attention to the time guidelines uh, because there are so many students applying to our schools. Typically, you want to keep your videos less than five minutes. Um, so just think about it as uh, like a preview if it is a longer film, um, or you can do kind of like a reel of um, multiple films in one. And we love to see a sense of storytelling. So, you know, um, we don't expect that you are going again to be a complete expert as a, um, a feature length film that you would see coming from Hollywood with hundreds and hundreds of um, people working on one film. So we want to see that you have like a, a fantastic narrative ability um, and that uh, we see which interest you have. If it's the writing, the directing, the editing. Um, sometimes students will work together on films and just make sure that uh, in the credits or in the description, you let us know which piece you worked on specifically. So again, we're not necessarily looking um, at the production as much as we are looking at you know, the storyline and how you're thinking about things aesthetically. Um, yeah, and I think that wraps it up for portfolio. So I'm gonna talk about jobs in the arts. So can you get a job in the arts? Yes, absolutely. And these are the logos that you see on the screen are just a very, very small number of uh, companies that students that graduate from all of our four schools here today um, enjoy positions at. And, and usually it starts with an internship and then leads into some sort of other opportunity. But the jobs vary from places like Facebook to automotive manufacturers to um, sports companies, printers, uh, retailers, software companies, production, media, museums, uh, everything that you see on, on the screen and more. So the opportunities are really endless. Every, you know, everything around you has been touched by a designer or an artist. You know, the chair that you're sitting in, the screen that you're viewing this presentation from, the fork that you eat from, the grocery store that you shop from, the packaging that you open, all of that is touched by uh, a, a designer at some point. So these are just some big numbers. And uh, one, one, of, one thing that has been um, amazing about COVID is that the opportunities for artists and designers has never been more rich. Um, uh, companies are hiring creative thinkers, things are going digital, uh, students are enjoying opportunities in areas where they could not access previously, um, really taking advantage of the virtual world. But as you can see, you know, there's over 30 million jobs that are generated um, for, for uh, generated that revolve around creativity. That's a huge number of jobs and in in it's growing incrementally. 
happen. So all of the titles here are just, a, again, a very, very small number of the titles that uh, students who graduate from any of our four schools um, hold. And you can see that ceramics technician, animation, marketing manager, studio, exhibition, writer, product designer, sculptor, film curator, um, all of these, what's, what's important to take away from this is that in any given industry, there are multiple, multiple uh, creative jobs within one area. So for instance, within animation, there are literally hundreds of jobs. You know, there's the main animator, but there's a person that studies color all day and they color, you know, they, they are the person that's responsible for color. There's a person that's responsible for texture. There's a person that's responsible for movement. Um, so all of these, it's important to just drill down and get kind of specific on what you want to do. Also, uh, many companies have in-house uh, creative departments. So if you think about the major retailers in the world, I'll, I'll pick Target. Target has their own design team um, where they hire multiple designers across anywhere from digital to sculptors um, across there. So you, you, know, you have many, many opportunities uh, in-house and out of house. Okay. So these are the top industries that, you know, from our schools collectively that uh, students tend to gravitate to. So architecture, design, performing arts, advertising, the internet, uh, movies, government, telecom, and healthcare. These are the ones that are trending right now. Um, very heavily uh, telecom as well as healthcare. Yeah. So um, if you are in a position where you have, you know, family, your parents still want you to go into a STEM field, um, you know, there's this whole myth of the starving artist and how you can't be successful in an art field and whatnot. Um, that's simply untrue. <laughs> so there are a list of um, statistics you see here. Um, you know, I don't won't necessarily go through and read all of these to you, but a STEM degree is not necessarily a cure all for everything. Um, a bunch of students who go into STEM don't finish their programs. Um, as we talked about in the beginning, especially with CCA, CCS, um, some of our art and design programs carry a STEM designation. So just because a program is creative doesn't mean it can't fall into that category. Um, but the, the area that I want to sort of call out um, is that third statistic um, that starts with 74% of art and design alum who intend to work in art and design fields hold jobs in those fields. And that's compared to 58% in biology, 56% in accounting, and 53% in engineering. So really that um, ability to get the job or the type of job that you want is, is pretty strong in an art and design, um, in an art and design field. Um, and you can see there the uh, median annual wage for art and design jobs is about $46,000 from 2018, which was higher than for all other occupations. So it can still certainly be a very beneficial um, field for you to pursue. Um, and then um, we know that funding your education is a, a huge part of this whole process. Um, for the most part, all of us here today offer merit-based scholarships, um, and all you have to do for consideration of a merit-based scholarship is to apply. Um, generally, we're looking at your grades and the strength of your portfolio for those types of things, um, but other, um, other factors can come into play as well. So again, um, your artist statement and your essay, the level of interest that you've shown, your involvement in activities outside of, um, outside of school, um, those portfolio reviews, again, going into that level of interest and whatnot, all those can really kind of um, factor into merit scholarship consideration. Um, and again, for the four of us here today, and sort of comparable to the other ACAD schools, but you'll want to check with them individually. Um, again, all you need to do is apply. Generally, we have a priority deadline for consideration, but there's not an additional application you need to fill out. There's not a little magic box you have to find to check. You just really need to get in all your application materials. But, so I was, I was just going to yes. add one thing about um, merit. So each, each one of our schools, you know, if 
this is why it's so important that you need to connect with uh, with us directly with with an admissions counselor. So don't be shy about that. We are here to help you and prepare you so that you submit the best portfolio, the best quality portfolio that's curated and documented properly so that you have the best opportunity to get as much merit scholarship as possible. Um, the ACAD resource, the site to have your portfolio reviewed, NPD, and all of us here, you know, every time you have an opportunity to put your work in front of some in front of somebody that's actually going to be evaluating your work, the better off you're going to be. So whether you have one piece, two piece, three pieces, pieces in work, like Sarah had mentioned, it doesn't matter. Make sure that you connect with somebody in the admissions office to, to set up a review on your portfolio. And then the outside resource, resource links that we have listed here are really important as well. Start early with this. Um, many of our schools do not offer 100% scholarship for international students. That's why it's important that you do the footwork here and that you investigate each one of these sites and that you get very particular and very targeted and focused in your application. So if you are in need of assistance in terms of writing it or, or tips or whatnot, again, you, you can reach out to your admissions counselor to get some advice and direction around, around that. That's it. Thank you, Anita. Um, and then that's sort of the end of the bulk of our presentation. This is our contact information. Um, so take a screenshot of this slide or you can jot down, um, you can jot down that information. Um, but essentially we wanted to leave some time for questions. Um, so please, let us know what additional information we can share with you. Thank you, Mike. Um, what a what a what wonderful presentation! Really, you've covered things very thoroughly. We do have a few questions. I mean, obviously, we had one question about scholarships, but I th I think you really um, that was covered. So we can go on to the next one, um, talking about internship opportunities. So when students finish. Um, are there opportunities there even for them to do an internship while they're doing the program? No. Definitely. Um, and we, well, we can kind of all speak a little bit more specifically to our institutions, but um, at CCA, some of the programs, especially on the design and architecture side, um, require internships as part of the curriculum. And therefore there are faculty internship advisors, but um, everyone has access to our career development department and internships are encouraged for everyone. So, um, it's something that generally um, between the faculty and career development that you're able to to sort of research and look into. Usually students are doing internships after their junior year, um, but it really is kind of fluid and flexible um, in most cases, unless the internship is built into the curriculum and there's a company locally that you're working with, you want to do your internship during the summer. Um, so you're not, you know, missing school or fall, falling out of sequence with anything. Um, but yes, there are certainly internship avail internships available kind of across the board with all the different programs and the resources to help you find those opportunities. One thing that I should mention as well, that's a, a huge benefit of studying at a specific art and design institution is having that career development office because a state school that has an art department may not have access to the same types of connections or may not have the faculty like a specific art and design school does. So a lot of our, like I'll use our interior design program as an example, it's a smaller program and all of the faculty members are teach or are currently working in those industries. So those are your connections to get an internship or to land a job after graduation. So oftentimes students in their junior year will take a course with this instructor and then by the end of that term, they'll have an internship with that same instructor working at their company or working for their corporation. So those connections are going to be beneficial throughout the curriculum as, as well as directly with the uh, career development offices. The, the other thing that I was gonna mention is that each one of our schools within our curriculum we infuse professional development. So we're always thinking about 
life after art school, what's going to happen after art school. So we would really encourage you your first year and throughout your, you know, four years at any of our institutions to connect with the career department, because they are the ones that will help you prepare your website, your portfolio, your CV, your softer skills. They'll help you with practice mock interviewing. They'll help you with job search strategies. They'll help you land those internships. They are really the connection to your professional life and your life after art school. And again, to just underscore what Sarah, Sasha was talking about with um, that's why going to a specific art and design school, uh, we have the connections within the art, artist community and we can definitely um, you know, connect you with any opportunity that you're, you're, you know, any field that you're interested in that you may not have um, a contact in. I think that's so important um, to hear, especially for parents, because they're concerned if their child is going to art school, what are they going to do when they finish? And that to know that that support is available for our students to that employability and with their creative side is just, it's just fantastic. The support is there. We do have some questions coming in. We have, um, you talked, when you were speaking about port portfolios, I think you mentioned, somebody's asking about how many pieces to include, how many pages. Um, I would imagine that everyone's a little bit different and depending on what they're submitting a portfolio um, regarding what field of art. I'd like to yeah, notice. it's, um, <laughs> It is, it, it does vary from school to school. Um, I would say the most important thing is, is not to focus if, you know, it's a high school student and um, they're thinking about uh, applying, you know, a year from now, two years from now, um, you don't necessarily have to think about the end result just, just now, but really producing as much as you can, because um, if you start, if you're going to start like in your senior year um, and just sort of uh, put together or make the minimum amount of work, um, you're not going to have as much to work with um, and to kind of edit out. Um, so, you know, taking as many art classes as you can and really, um, you know, working both in school and outside of school is going to really um, uh, increase your skill set and give you an, an enough work um, so you can edit down um, the work for the school. But yeah, as far as the, the number of pieces, it's usually between 10 and 20 um, finished artworks. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we have a question. Um, do you have a pathway or conditional admission for students um, to for study masters for students who do not meet the language requirements? Does anybody have a pathway program? Um, uh, that is a definitely connect individually with the institutions. Um, okay. We generally don't offer conditional admission. Um, mm -hmm. There are instances where if you don't specifically meet the English language requirement, but you're close, um, you know, sometimes we're able to offer admission because we have holistic admissions processes. Um, but generally, no. Um, for CCA, a student can apply through an ESL, um, or I'm sorry, an ELS center. Um, so they would go to the center, they need um, certificate level 112, I believe, and then they would apply through there. Um, but that's sort of the only option. And I do apologize. I'm going to hand this over to my colleagues. I have an appointment uh, with a grad student now, so I have to hop off. But um, Thank you all again for attending. I'm leaving you in great hands, Paula. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank, and, you, um, Thank you, Mike. Thank you. I will Thanks, put my Mike. contact info in the chat. So if anybody Thank needs me or there are any CCA questions my colleagues can't answer, please let me know. So, Thank, Thank you. you all. Thank Take you. Um, we have a question about, uh, does the Master of Architecture include language like Python when I want to design organic design by using Grasshopper Rhino? <laughs> Yes, oh, that was Mike that jumped <laughs> off right at that moment. Mike would have been the person to answer this, but oh. Sarah also has architecture. Yeah, not on the master's level. That's what I thought. Yeah, so I would encourage that person to contact Mike directly um, because none of us have masters in architectures, so okay. we can't answer that. Thank you. Um, let's see. We have that's, that's the contact information. Um, I had one other question here. Just one minute. Does anybody want, can anybody speak about graduate programs on fashion design or animation, the requirements? And 
again, it's a graduate question. Yeah. So, oh, is it graduate or undergraduate? Well, what you, why don't you, you could probably touch on the undergraduate and then if you can add any information, any insight to the graduate program. Yeah. So uh, again, as we were a broken record, check each school you may be applying to because the requirements vary slightly. Um, and if you're applying to an undergraduate program, like we've mentioned, that has a foundation year, you may not need to show direct projects in fashion or direct projects in animation, as long as you're showing your foundation skills, such as like perspective, proportions, you understand composition, you're thinking conceptually, and how it's original artwork, that's going to show them that you have the skills necessary to be in their program. If you're applying to a direct, direct entry program like CCS, uh, for animation, we would want to make sure that you have drawing skills because it is a very drawing based program. So that would be something like five traditional drawings that could be direct observation or sketches or original characters, but it still shows those same skills like proportions, perspective, values, composition. So it's just showing that traditional drawing skill in addition to all of those other technical skills that all of us would be looking for. Um, and I also know that there are some undergrad fashion programs where you actually have to have physical pieces. There are some where you do not have to have physical pieces. So it uh, goes back into that holistic idea of looking at every school that you're researching or looking for a specific program that might have the portfolio requirements that meet what where you are. So if you don't have those physical pieces, maybe finding schools that have fashion programs that don't require that may be a good fit for you. Yeah, this is where it's really important to connect with an admissions uh, admissions counselor at the graduate level because they will be very specific in terms of what's needed. That's great advice. And we, we love it when the students actually reach out directly to the colleges and universities to get the exact information that they're looking for. You need for. to know who you are so yeah. that when your portfolio pops up, we can say, yes, I know this person. I've been working with this person. You know, they're committed, et cetera. And it's even more so on the, on the graduate level. They need to get to know who you are well, well in advance. We have one final question about online studies. Are there any opportunities for students to um, pursue these programs online? Yeah, definitely. Um, I know uh, it, it varies by school, of course, but um, as we have all been sort of uh, creating an online platform for all of the programs um, with COVID, uh, it has really created a lot more opportunities as far as that goes. Um, most of our schools also have something, uh, an office that's called either continuing studies or at MICA it's called open studies that are um, not degree programs, but they are courses that, that you can take. Um, we do have several um, degree programs that are online as well. The only kind of tricky part, and I'm sure you can work directly with Education USA on this is that if you are taking a course and you are not physically going to be in the US, um, it, there are implications about your student visa. Um, so if it's like a low residency program, it, it can be a little tricky um, if you are only coming for a very short amount of time. Um, so, you know, th those are, are things that you can work out individually with the school, but I think um, I'll let my colleagues talk about their online programs, but yeah. Um, there's a lot of uh, online availability out there. Okay. Yeah, we do have many students right now that are currently taking 100% online. And um, our goal is an and hybrid. So we have synchronous and asynchronous going on right now. Um, and all of our all of our concentrations across all 18 departments are offering online courses. Hopefully we'll be back in studio in the fall. You know, hopefully. Oh, we hope. Right. <laughs> um, someone is asking about the cost of a master's in architecture, but I'm going to answer that by directing them to the website to actually speak with the admissions person at the at the college or university that they're interested in. I think to find out more about the cost structure. And Unless anybody that, wants to add anything to that. Well, all of us are very transparent in our costs. Uh -huh. So mm -hmm. on every single school's website, you should be able to find a cost breakdown or a cost brochure that will actually show what the cost of tuition is, what the supplies may be, or any um, expenses that may, may be estimated. 
so that you have a full picture idea of what the full cost of attendance for one year of study would be. And then you can multiply that based on the program, whether it's a four year bachelor's or a two year MFA or three year MFA. I would also encourage you to make an appointment with the student financial services office in each one of the colleges and speak directly to a, a, a financial um, advisor who can lay out year by year exactly what your cost is going to be so that you know what you're getting getting yourself into um, up front. That's what they're there for. So the more pre-work that you can do, the better off you are. I'm also going to add um, a link since there's so many questions about architecture. Um, many of our, our schools, you know, Micah has an architecture program on the undergraduate level, but um, for the most part, um, architecture programs, especially on the graduate level, are going to be quite different um, than, in other words, uh, than getting a master's of fine art. Usually the degree that you're getting with architecture is called an MARC. Um, and I'm putting in, I hope this link comes through okay. Yeah. It's a, it, it is the accrediting body for schools um, that have architecture programs. So, you know, students are able to get those resources that way. Uh, but on the master's level, you really want to be looking at um, programs that have the MARC degree and not an MFA. Master of Fine Art, okay. Yeah. That's helpful to know. Um, does anybody um, else have any questions? Or I think, I think I've taken all the... We really appreciate all the questions yeah. we have had. Yeah, no, it's great. And you gave such a wonderful high level overview of what art and design schools are. Um, I think uh, and not giving students an opportunity to consider fields maybe they didn't think about before. So I really appreciate your time and, um, and the information that you provided. Thank you so much. Happy Accreditation is key. Make sure that you're, you know, and that you emphasize so that key. because we emphasize that all the time, the importance of, of schools being accredited and doing their research around that. And there is a website you can search. Um, sorry, it's slipping my mind right away right now, but if anybody has a question, please reach out to Education USA and we can help you determine that because there are a lot of fraudulent uh, entities out there that you want to avoid. And also there are schools that um, aren't even necessarily fraudulent, but they are for-profit institutions. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, you can certainly get a degree from those schools and get a job after graduation um, by all means, but the, the degree is just not going to hold the same weight um, mm -hmm. as a, a school that's accredited. And, and the, the ones that are for-profit oftentimes advertise a lot. So mm -hmm. when you Google art school come up but they're going to be the first time. ones that yeah. you know pop yeah. up um so just be aware of that thank you thank you so much okay Asil, do you have anything i think she's thank you so much uh, i really enjoyed it and yeah for me like i really enjoyed it a lot and it's really valuable and um, lots of information thank you so much for the, the taking the time and answer all the questions and hopefully we would work with you inshallah in the future in different sessions. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. Of course. Thank Our you. pleasure. Thank you for having Thank us. Thank you everybody. Thank you.